This was the same guy as last year. It's off. That one. It's just you.
So I always like to be surprised, and it's so hard to keep. I mean, the writers have a lot of difficulty, continue, you know, having to continually surprise us. And uh, I don't know, just as reading it, I just thought, wow, I did not see that coming. So I was, I was, I was, you know, happy. Yeah, I thought it was great. And then the way they handled it too. The, I was watching it with my family, and they all looked at me like, oh my God, he's dead. He's dead. Like they, the suspension was just so, you know, awesome. And then. You should have seen Steven walking around on set with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he and I both had to have just complete toe to head blood gore, you know. It was it was a lot to get on and get off for sure. <laughs> You know, uh, like a good example of that is, you know, Jason's arc, you know, how he hated vampires in season one and then winds up falling in love with one. And, uh, and I think this is another one of those, like, kind of crazy opposite end arcs. You know, Bill's the one who, who's, he's the human vampire. He's the one who can fall in love and still has that flame inside of him. And now he's completely devoid of that. And it's now going to be this, you know, let's farm human beings, let's lead the war kind of villain, which uh, I think is a great arc, and I think it's going to, you know, be really exciting for season six. And if you all want to line up in between the aisles, we'll be taking questions from the audience pretty soon. There will be people with microphones to uh, help you out. And speaking of character arcs, Alcide, we've got a lot of backstory on Alcide this season. He's gone through some changes. What do you think about all that? <laughs> it's about time he kicks some ass. <laughs> It's about time he got laid. <laughs> Without it being awkward. Um, yeah, you know, the, the wolf got to come out this year, which uh, I think puts him in a, in a nice spot, and especially with the big vampire war coming up, it puts him in a very interesting position, you know? Um, but yeah, I've been bugging all the writers this past year, like, you know, what is, what's like the day-to-day -day for a pack master? Like, what do you do? You wake up and you what? And then you do what, you know? So, uh, we're figuring all of that out now, I guess. In real life, would you classify yourself as a lone wolf or a leader of the pack? <laughs> I'm not a pack animal in real life at all, you know? Um, yeah, no, I, I definitely, I, I march to the beat of my own drum, you know? I don't think I've ever been swayed by groups or opinions or things like that. I just do my own thing and I say what I think and I'm not afraid to do it. So, that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> Nelson, Lafayette has been through quite a number of changes since the last time you were here at Dragon Con. What do you think of the various character arcs, the fact that he killed his lover? Um, I don't like that, actually. <laughs> I was like, why, why do I have to do that? I have to kill my boyfriend. It was sad. Um, well, I'm glad Lafayette finally is having fun again. Because yeah. he was going to do some shit. There's <laughs> my kids in the house. He was going to do some things. <laughs> so I'm glad he's, uh, he's back to a place where you see the old Lafayette sort of peeking out again, having some fun and doing his old things like selling some stuff. Cajun <laughs> <Agent> Margarita. <laughs> One of the uh, most interesting scenes I think on the show ever happened in Merlot's bar not too long ago. A fairy giving birth to four. <laughs> what was that scene like? That was a long day. <laughs> so, um, it was amazing to watch um, her on that, on that pool table in those 
she's a ballerina, so she she's flexible. Um, but all day long to be doing that, and then you know doing that high pitch squeal, and then us like you know the peanut gallery back there. <laughs> And then my favorite moment of that scene was, you know, we were rehearsing without the babies for a long time because uh, you, you can only use newborn babies for a very short amount of time when you're on a set. And so um, when we finally, when they finally brought those adorable little babies in and they sat them down and Chris Bauer, who plays Andy Belfler, and picked one of them up and went like, <laughs> smiled like this and it was just so adorable and we all just, you know, we all loved it and they were like, oh, you have to keep it, you have to keep it, so we did a whole shot of him like holding the baby. Hey, weren't there, I, for some reason I remember like 10 babies, did they cut the babies they down? They did, yeah, I think in the original script there were more. Yeah, there were more, right? <laughs> Ten babies originally. Maybe they just couldn't get that many babies. Uh, yeah, that would be probably a lot of babies. <laughs> and Sam, in real life, you have twins. What advice would you give Andy Bell for raising a magical child? <laughs> what, what advice would I give Andy Bell for raising a child? Oh my god. Well, you know, Chris, Chris Bauer has two kids. He's got a boy and a girl. So I actually, he actually gives me advice on, on, on what to do. Um, I, I, yeah, Andy Belfer. I think he'd be a sweet dad. I think Andy Belfer would be kind of a sweet dad. I don't know. Um, probably going to need Holly's help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he may need your help, too. You never know. Yeah, well, I know something about babies. <laughs> of course, the big news this season, uh, Alan Ball leaving the show. Do you have any special memories that you can share with us of working with? <laughs> Too many to choose from? <laughs> well, um, I was supposed to die in the books. And Alan Ball made a choice to keep me on the show. And
Uh, well, uh, I mean... <laughs> do what? <laughs> Hook up. <laughs> well, I, I, early on, early on, but uh, the only one season went on the last, they started letting me add that. Like, early on, I didn't do it a lot. Uh, last season, not so much. Not too much, not too much. I know, right? <laughs> Tell me about filming the scene where your lips get so together. <laughs> That shit was so ridiculous. <laughs> because I had that prosthetic on for six hours without lunch. And then, <clears throat> and then I started trying to like talk to the director in sign language. It was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was just, and then you have to stop and write something down. Just, it was, it was, it was, it was, and then I was sweating <laughs> up under it. I had to spit and swallow oh. the size of the right? <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Well, Joe, you said that you may have filmed the first sex scene in history that needed Hong Kong wires. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> when werewolves have sex, it gets rough. <laughs> some wires because she got tossed <laughs> and they tried to hook those wires up to me but because of the angles they couldn't figure out a way to CGI the wires out so we just had to drill some reinforcement <laughs> Superman off the end of it. <laughs> it's probably the only sex scene in history where someone launches through the air and they land pelvis to pelvis. <laughs> we talked about that. <laughs> a lot of firsts. You also had some scenes, you weren't actually in them, but there was a teenage version of you. Did you work with that actor much, helping him get into character? <laughs> No, but he owes me 10% because I got him his job. <laughs> they were looking for young Al C, and, uh, and I was in my manager's office one day, and I said, you know, they're looking for this young Al C, blah, 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 and uh, my manager's assistant, Garrett, was like, oh, wait a second, and he looks, you know, types, starts typing, and I guess that kid is from Georgia, or Atlanta, I think, or he was on a series out here or something, and uh, Atlanta-related, and... Uh, he says, you know, comes, you know, come behind the computer, and I look at this kid's picture, and I'm like, that's great. That kid looks way cooler than I did at age 14. Because <laughs> they were asking me for pictures of age 14, and all my 14-year-old pictures are like Coke bottle, glasses, ears stuck out, horrible haircut. I'm like, my pictures at 14 are not going to help them cast <laughs> at all. And uh, so I saw this kid, and I'm like, great, he looks really cool. Let's go with that. And so I shot it over to our producer, Greg Feinberg, and sure enough, he was at the table right with this kid. And I'm like, you owe me the money. <laughs> Wait, let's take some questions from the audience. We'll start over here on... Director because he just had such a strong 
strong handle on things. I was very, very impressed with him. Yeah, yeah he, was I, I, he was so prepared. He, and he wasn't stressing out like he'd already done all his work. And, oh, uh, 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 Um, 